You know, it was Teddy Roosevelt that said that we have to consume, he urged that we consume with restraint because the wildlife uh, or the resources we have in our lands belong not only to us, but also to the generations of Americans are gonna follow. He said that many years ago, and that still rings true today. If you look at also in 1872, uh, Yellowstone National Park became the first world, uh, the world's first uh, na uh, nationally protected uh, park in the world. Uh, it, it became part of our fabric uh, of America, where we protect our land and our wildlife. So for many years, we've been taking this as one of the American values. And therefore, it is very important that the Conservation Caucus, uh, the foundation that we work on in a bipartisan way, we reach out to other partner nations uh, to make sure that we work together uh, on this issue, the, the development, but do it in a, in, a, in a very sensitive way so we can protect our environment. The other thing is we as the United States, we have the resources, we have the expertise, uh, the uh, partnerships that we've developed uh, with the public-private sector is so important to address it because even though we're the, the most powerful nation in the world, we're sort of limited in so many ways. And this is why this public-private private partnerships that we've been pushing is very important. And as we prioritize our initiatives uh, in this uh, new Congress coming in, uh, and as we look at making sure that we have conservation as part of the fundamental part of the U.S. policy as we go across the world, it's important that we provide the leadership. And this is what the uh, ICC and the ICCF uh, provides this, this uh, leadership in conservation. It's a bipartisan approach that it has, especially when you look at this very divisive time that we're in right now, divided country. There are actually members of Congress, uh, House of Representatives, senators that are willing to sit down, work together, use this space so they can come up with initiatives to address sustainable development and of course making sure that we balance the development with our sensitive ecosystems that we have across the world. For many years we've had this expertise, uh, it's, it's been part of our fabric here in the United States, but when we work with the development countries, you've got to put yourself in their shoes. A lot of times they're trying to just uh, you know, develop their industry and as they're developing the industry, we gotta make sure that we come in with expertise as partners, the expertise where they can also develop uh, their industry, but do it in such a way that doesn't impact our greatest resources. And that's, you know, that's, uh, that's the ecosystems that we have. So we have done that. We've invited uh, members of parliament, members of you know, other partners, other leaders, political leaders, where they come in and sat down with us and we together, the United States and those partner uh, nations, we've been able to develop this and create this international will to make sure we find that balance between uh, development and, and of course, protecting our environment. First, we gotta look at where we've been uh, and develop and, and build on that foundation. Uh, other leaders in the past, uh, other my colleagues have done a good job in establishing a good foundation as to where we need to be uh, as a caucus uh, and as a foundation, number one. So we need to make sure we continue getting more members, Democrats, Republicans, in a bipartisan way so we can develop congressional uh, participation, number one. Two, just uh, be innovative in how we work with other countries. We cannot be the big brother or the big sister as the United, as the United States and come in and tell those nations what they ought to do. We bring them in and as uh, equal partners, we'll come up with ideas so we can find those innovative public-private partnerships uh, to protect our environment, but, but at the same time, have that sustainable development that's so key. Uh, you know, those are the things, those are the, uh, you know, the uh, victories that we've seen. Uh, those are, that's the foundation. And now, of course, the question is, where do we go from here? 
and it's building on those successes we've had in the past and making sure that we not only have increased participation as members of Congress and other partner nations, uh, making sure that we are continually uh, are innovative and thinking outside the box uh, to protect our environment and, and, and still have that sustainable development. But I think the other thing is here as Americans, we got to make sure that conservation, just like it was for Teddy Roosevelt, just like it was for other folks in the past, that it remains part of our U.S. policy as we go across the world. My, my father uh, grew up with a very little bit of education. In those days, uh, they would take out uh, the young kids to go work in the fields. Uh, so my father always had a love uh, for nature, uh, for the land, because he says this is where life comes from, uh, from the land. So from a very young age, he taught all eight of us, there's eight kids, I'm the oldest of eight kids, uh, taught us the importance of the importance of wildlife and what that means to us. It's not only uh, food, but it also means that we, like, just like Teddy Roosevelt said, you consume it with restraint. Uh, at the same time, the resources that we had, he always said, he always said, this land belongs not only to us right now, but it belongs to people of the generations uh, coming in. So if you think about it, in many ways, my dad, uh, who never met, uh, Dean probably doesn't even know who Teddy Roosevelt is and um, what part of the history came in, but in many ways he had the same type of thinking. Uh, is, is We do everything with constraint, we do everything uh, to make sure that we just don't consume everything and forget about what's going to happen tomorrow because tomorrow uh, will be another day and we want to make sure as that sun rise, uh, uh, you know, rises the next day, uh, that other people enjoy when that sun comes out, that they're able to enjoy the wildlife, they're able to enjoy the, the rivers, the mountains, the streams. Uh, and, and that's what my dad uh, you know, would tell us. And it's amazing because as I'm telling this story, I'm thinking about how I grew up uh, in a ranch and how my dad also grew up. And he, even now at 90 years of age, he still has a love of the land.